In this video, I will be talking about and demonstrating how to extract roof data or roof information using QGIS. So we will be using different data sources, such as elevation data or DSM, and the building footprint. And based on these, we will extract key information about the buildings. So in order to be able to construct um, better looking 3D visualizations and do um, some analysis. So if we, um, at the end of the video, we should have something that looks like this. So basically we have edited some of the buildings to create larger details. So using some of the roof information to split up our buildings. So we have buildings for a flat part and the steep part and so on. And also I have classified the buildings, the colors here, according to the building type. So this is the end visualization QGIS, but this data is also meant for, to be used in other tools such as SketchUp or City Engine or other of this type of more 3D visualization tool. So um, the base data that we're going to start with is um, our auto photo. Here, yeah, no, auto photos are not really good for defining footprints. So the blue is the footprint. And you can see that auto photos always have some screwness from angling. So therefore, we can see this side of the building and not that. So the plane has been somewhere up here, and the, the picture was taken. Um, that makes it difficult to identify the footprint. So if we look at this image, which is the surface data, you see that. There's a much clearer uh, some consistency between the surface data and the footprint data. And down here in this one, I have added the or calculated the angle data, so the slope. So we can have the green is the flat, and this movie color is a some is between 10 and 50 degrees, and this is between. 50 and 75, so that's this is probably, if you can see a, a Mansart or a Gamble a roof, as you as it's called in America, so, but in Europe typically called Mansart. So we have this with two steep edges and two not so steep at the top or flat. In this case here, same again, steep, steep, and a flat top. Um, so we have different variations of this uh, mansard with either a flat topping or a not so steep topping. And then we have the red, which is the edge of the building. So angles larger than 75, I have classified as red in this case. So that's our basic input data. We will need to talk about what we want to generate. So most important for us is to get these two measurements, so the eave height and the ridge height. So these are the two indications of the roof. So the building or the roof starts at the eave and ends at the ridge height. Also consider some of those different types of building roofs that we have. And they are always local variations. So you really need to know your roofs before doing this. So we have talked about we have this gamble roof, um, which we normally will call a mansard in Europe. Um, and it can have or be with a small angle, or it can have a deck, as in this case. We have a hip roof that we typically for find on one family buildings in Europe. Um, and we have flat roofs, of course. So lots of different types of roofs. What you want to classify them depends on how you want to uh, work with the data further. Getting to uh, identify these rooftops based on um, our surface data is a bit tricky. Um, it will be a course classification, um, and it's going to be a long journey to get there. So I've uh, written some steps that we'll go through. So basically, we'll start with our DSM. We will filter using this our neighbors. So this this is a neighborhood or focal. And 
analysis. You took me to the video about different types of raster uh, calculations. So we have um, a neighborhood, and we take a five by five matrix and calculate the median. That basically evens out all the small variations that would be. Most of them would be mobile phone antenna and so on. You'll do a calculation of the slope. All in brackets, they are the QGIS commands. We'll reclassify um, our slope based on the reclass by table tool. So I said 0 to 10%, that's flat, or 1. 10 to 50, I'll call that 2 or gamble. Um, we can call these from Mansart, so these are the edges. Um, we'll call these for, so Mansart set 50 to 75 and more than 75 percent i'll call it edge and we'll use this information so i'll filter then this to do a visual in, in investigation of our buildings see if there are any buildings that need to be split in order to do a reasonable 3d visualization of it once all of that is done we will um, take and our filtered dsm and then or evened out and filter out so we don't want our steep edges because if we want to calculate the e part that would be typically be the minimum of the roof and if you have these steep edges that might give us quite a lot of wrong data there so we will get rid of the steep edges we will have to do some transformation of zeros to no data in order to do our calculations and we will create a new masked DSM. This data will be used to aggregate it to our building. So we will find out what is the maximum, what is the minimum in the building. We will also um, use this new tool, this zonal histogram, to, to look at how large a percentage of each of the classes we made here, or, or different classes, how large a percentage of those are within each of our buildings. And finally, we'll use that information to do a classification of our roof tiles. So, a um, long journey, and um, let's uh, see how it goes in QGIS. So, we um, basically, so in QGIS, we uh, have our there, so we have a um, don't need this one anymore. Let's get rid of that. Um, a raster data buildings, yes, no, so one and zero. We have a DTM, we have a DSM, the service model, and we have an auto photo. These are the basic data that we'll be using. Do. And then we have, of course, a bullet building footprint um, again in a single polygon version because we know that there is a problem in um, in the 3D plugin when using multi patches. So we will use a single work geometry version of it here. Okay. So first of all, if we remember from our steps, um, our first step was to filter our DSM. So. We use this R dot neighbor. R dot neighbor. And we run it on our DSM. I will do it on a 5 by 5 pixel window. And what I want is a median. Okay. So I'll do that calculation. And what well, that's finished, that. So, probably a good idea to be a bit cautious with names. So, uh, let's rename this to DSM smoothed or, yeah, smooth. DSSMF, yeah, I don't know, smoothed. 
Um, okay. We will, um, once we got this one, we'll use that to calculate our slope on. So this is a relatively easy step. So there's this, the tool called slope. I use the one from GDale. And I'll do it on my PSMSSM. I slip the uh, smoothed out PSM. And, and I've got this layer. Have you got the high, the white one as the steep edges? And we here can see this flat top here move its edges around. Um, for classification later, I would um, do a classification of this data set also. So, in order to have a class for flat roofs, semi steep, so 10 to 50, 50 to 75, and so on. So, in order to do that, I will use the read class tool. Maybe you should just, um, that's called slope, that's fine. Uh, so I have this reclassification by table. So what it does is that down here I can enter a table and down here I specify what um, my different angle, or how this table should be read. So the first column is my minimum. The values are strictly larger than minimum and smaller than or equal to the third column or my second column, my max. So I'll be specifying, you see up here in this table, I will add a new row. So this first row, I will write from minus one to 10. Of course, I know there's no minus slopes, um, but that's because it has to be strictly larger. So if I put in a zero, zeros won't be classified. So therefore I use a minus. So that would be my class one. And I'll add a row. I will add more. So this class will go from 10. So strictly larger than 10, smaller than or equal to 50. And I'll call them for two. And this one, I will say from 50. To 75 and call them three. And the last class that's going to be the edges. And it's really seldom again here. Should it be 75 or 80? It um, depends on your area, you know. So this is um, as lots of working backwards and forth on this. I decided that maybe 75 is, maybe I should go for 80. I don't know. Let's stick with this. So I've created these one, two, three, four classes with these values. So I run my tool. Close it. Uh, maybe I should now call this one. Uh, rename it. So this is uh, my. I slope B class and I might as well just give it some coloring. So unique values, classify, that's fine. So we have the red edges, which are our edges of the buildings. We, so we have real estate, so more than 75%. We have these moving things, which is this typical mansard effect. So here we have a relatively steep roof. This is also very steep proof. Um, no, so no, there we have the mansard. So this is a less steep and a steep, well, again, with a flat top. Okay. See these standard hip buildings, they have this less steep uh, roof, while we have this very characteristic Copenhagen, Paris, many places we have a steep edge and a flat top. Um, so, using this data set, I now turn on my buildings and 
green, don't know that particular color. Let's make them blue. Um, and maybe I should make them a bit bigger. Now I'm at it. Um, so, good. So, what we're looking for now is buildings where we have red edges inside our building. So, that indicates for instance, here that we have some steep cuts, changes in elevation inside the building. That is something that we might also here inside this building. There's something going on here. Uh, we can uh, maybe also see it on the unclassified slope or even on the DSM. You can see there's something very tall here and there's a something really low down there. And there's some buildings there. So basically, we can use the DSM, the slope, and the classified slope to visually go through our buildings and see are there any buildings that need this one here is apparently also has some strange in that building that should be edited um, and split. Splitting geometries is a bit of a trick you have to learn. So um, let's look at how to do uh, that. In order to um, do my editing, um, find something to start with. Let's start with this church here. And um, I will typically need some extra toolbars. I normally use my advanced visualization tool and my snapping tool. So these are the two tools I'll be using for this. I'll take my buildings, set them into edit mode. And then there's different approaches. So this building here, um, I would like to make a island in this one for it for this um, for the tower. I might even make, make two. Um, so there's a steep edge and that goes up. So um, if that's the case, so it's something that is inside a building that you want to manipulate, you'll use this tool that's called field ring. So you can use field ring and you basically just can just draw your new ring inside your existing building. That splits a building into two. So now I've got two buildings. And I might want to um to split this one further into a well, so now this, I've got three buildings. This one corner here is not an internal part. So instead of putting a ring, I will split my building. I do that using the split tool here. So this one. The idea is that you have to start outside the building. Or preferably, you sometimes you can get along with the snapping. And you go into the, the building. And here my snapping is important. What I've done here is I said I'm snapping to my active layer and I'm snapping both to segments and vertices. So if there's a vertex, it will use that up there. And I'll place a point there, go out there, go outside the building, and then right click. So now this one is an individual building. If I use the select tool, you can see this part here is a building, this is a building. So I uh, let's find another place to do it on. Uh, there's lots that needs to be done. Um, this one up here is also interesting. So we have this big building here. Just select it. So, but clearly there is some parts that could be, um, looks like it's terraced. We can, if you look at our auto photo, you can see, oh yeah, there is a series of terraces. So, what I would like to do here is again just use my split tool. So um, coming from inside this building, going to the corner there, going to that corner, going out, ending. Inside this building, outside, ending. Oh, didn't. Uh, that's because I now had a selected object that was not part of the one I was doing. It doesn't have to be selected, but if there is something that is selected, then it will only work on the select. So be 
careful there. So, um, and finally, this one now selected. So, uh, I have to clear my selection, and then I can go and say, and split it, or oh, I should have selected that. So that now that one is split into several parts. This one is also a really annoying building. So again, just using the splitting tool. There's nothing selected. So find me. Go in. Click. Out. Finish. Um, again, here there's something strange going on there. Um, this time it might be a good idea to see what buildings I have. So if I select this building, okay, so it runs up here. Difficult to see, but it's under there. Um, and if I look at my slope data or my, oh, this might be the clearest. So we have this low area here. Um, so again, use my clip tool. Come from outside the object, intersect for that one, intersect, 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 outside my object, finished. Um, now let's clear our selection. Um, final one of this type. So again, this type in snap. Exactly which layer is the best to use is difficult to say. Um, this time I might want to select, so I say this is a building I want to edit. Make sure I don't do anything wrong. And then say I'm coming from outside, I'll be snapping there, and I'll be into this building with the outside. So now I have a new building there. Oh, now let's make that one. It's so annoying all of these small buildings are not split. Um, also this variation, if you look in here, has lots of slopes. That's because this is a roof garden. So uh, there's always problems that um, you have to face. Um, so outside this building, that there, that there, that there, outside the building, finished. Must be, I think you understand the principle. Um, there's some that are a bit more difficult. This one is really annoying building. So if we look here, we have a flat part and then a steep part and a really steep part. Um, and again, a hole down there. If you look at the elevation data, you can see higher, even higher, and then something that is down at the surface. So this is probably a garage system in here. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make one building here, another building this part, and then third building down here. However, this is going to be really difficult because this is the hole in there. I want to make holes, but I can't make a hole and start round a hole. So in order to do this, I'd have to get rid of that one first. So I'll start out by using my delete ring. So that one and clicking here so that deleted that ring and then i can use my add ring to my fill ring here it's okay i wanted one part to be up here and maybe this is best to do this tool on it uh we I mean, see, it's going to be a bit dirty because that we have many different variations of elevation here. It'll probably not be a really clean cut. And another ring is going to be here in this part. And a, this time I will use a not a fill ring, but a ring. So this is not, this inner part is not part of 
our building as such. So, some cases you'll have to delete a hole and then build it up again. So now I have, in this case, a building out here, a building here, and a building here, and a hole there. So, editing the data, um, checking around, looking for things where you have edges or looking at your other data to see if you can find places that need editing. Probably should also have done some and superb young this building up here. Um, but I think you got the principle. So um, save the data. I've been a bit stupid here. Um, I don't know what because I've edited my original data set. That was a bit of a blunder. Um, I don't know if I can do the save as. See what, um no so let's see let's see what this will do um okay buildings uh one see that's before or after the edits have been committed yeah it's not, so not much remember to um bef before you do this copy um your data set i'll just save my down there i have a i have a backup so problem um so what you should have done before doing this was that it would be a good idea to have gone and said and save features as so you had a copy that you could work on safely without mixing everything up um so Apologize for not saying this first. Um, it's, um, I think we got there now. Um, we made our buildings. What should we do more? So we have done that. We've done our visual interpolation. Now we need to take our DSM we made. So remember, we made this uh, our DSM SN here. Our smoothed but it still has um data on the steep edges so and it still has um so these values this one is steep that's still part of it and it still has also has clearly data outside the buildings we want to get rid of those what we want to do is that we want to have only data where our slope class is not equal for and where we don't have any buildings. So this can be done in our raster calculator using this trick of multiplication. So if I use my calculator, so my raster calculator, uh, raster, uh, field calculator, raster calculator here, And um, I think I want to use that one. I remember the same. Um, yes, for them. so I want to say if my slope. So if slope is different, I use this one is not equal to four. So this will return. I can put a bracket around it. So this bracket here will return one. If my and that was wrong by the way, uh, is is my reclassified slope? I want to do it. So that one, if my reclassified slope, the ones with the classes in, are one, two, or three, this will return a one. If it's four, it will turn zero. If I multiply that by my buildings, which have one where there's a building, zero where there's no building. So if there's no building, everything will be zero. If there's a building and it's not classified as four, then it will be one. If it is classified for by as four and it is a building, it will be zero. So it's always you know a trick to get the hang of these logics in the calculations. Once you got it, it's a powerful tool. So 
and I'll use my filter DSM thing. So that one has my base for my calculation. And run it. And uh, close this. So here I have a lot of my calculations. I have my one, so it's white, where I have buildings, and you can see it's zero, where I have the steep edges, or where I have outside my building. Um, the next thing I need to do is uh, this has a zero there. Um, and I'm going to use this for my elevation calculations. So I need to not have a zero because zero is a legal elevation. And we could have building heights of zero. So um, we we'll need to do some calculations on this. And um, in order to avoid this problem with zero but have no data, so I can distinguish between zero, building height that is zero, and no data, I'll need to convert this zero to no data. The tool for this is called Translate. So um, I'll use this Translate tool, and I'll set my, this one, so we'll get the, vec that's a vector version. I want the raster version uh, there. I will take in my mask. So this output here should have given it another name. Um, for my raster calculator, yes, let's let's do that. Um, so we have this output here. Let's call that uh, mask uh, one zero. Um, so now we know that one, and this was this tool here. I use mask zero, and what I'll do is I'll set hit this column here says assign a specific no data value. So zero will be now considered as my no data value, and while I'm down here, I might as well just change it to bytes because I've only got one two, and zero now. So that's the efficient storage of this, and run this. So that's a very quick tool. Um, and it's this one converted. I basically don't need that one anymore. My converted tool here has black in there. And you can see, I can see um, at the moment, I'm seeing if I turn this on, you can see I'm seeing the underlying layers um, outside it. It hasn't noticed that it's wrong here in the classification um, i can if i want always if you have strange numbers uh on a legend here you can always go in and just choose your value and then apply it. what i want to do here is i just want to say this is unique values classify and okay and now you can see i've only got the class one here so this is right now. So now I know I only want to have the building heights inside these. The next step I'll have to look at is, um, so what I need to do now is that I need to calculate my, um, my elevation data, so my building height. So the buildings are, the height of the buildings is my DSM. I just have a little, um, cat issue here so um i have to calculate my building heights which is my surface model minus the dtm so the buildings are the height of the dtm the surface minus the dtm and then i will need to use my converted here my mask to blend so i just call that one mask so um but i'll use this one to mask out, so I only got moving the building. So my raster calculator 
I will um, do a DSM, and I should use my filtered one, of course. So that's that one. And I will multi subtract, uh -huh. subtract my DTM. And then all of this. So that's one part of my operation. I'll put that in bracket. Because then I'll multiply with my mask. Multiply by my mask. And what happened? Yeah. Uh, minus. Yeah. So my DSM minus the DTM multiplied by my mask. So that will remove anything that's outside the building. And I will um, just basically use my DSM as my base for this calculation. And run that. So now I have this layer, well, my output layer, which has building. Let's get rid of my underlying information. So let's see my auto photo where I haven't. So I've only got, you can see, I only got elevation data for the buildings, and I've only got it um, where. I don't have the steep edges. So this one is my building height. My building height layer. That contains my clean building height, if you wish, um, information on my buildings. So now I've basically got generated at last, the information I need. So I have my building height. This layer here that I can use to extract what is the maximum, what is the minimum height in each building. And I have my slope classes uh, that are get rid of the mask. So these are the different, so I can see which areas are flat. What I now need is I need to aggregate this data to my buildings. So in order to do that, I can whatever order I do it in doesn't really matter. Um, that these when last type of raster operations is zonal, where my buildings are zones. It does statistics different types inside these zones. So this is the ones I'm going to use. There uh, are two that I need here. There is the uh, zone statistics. I can use that on my building height to get the maximum height, the minimum height, the median. Uh, and I can use zone histogram to calculate how many percentage of each of the different types of um, slope that are within my building. So um, let's start with zonal histogram. So, I'll take my buildings. So this is the one I'll do the calculations on. This one, my buildings, I should have had made a copy, mm -hmm. um, is the one that I'm going to store my data in. And we're going to create some new attributes that start with the name hist, and then what the number of the, of the class, the attribute. So I'll run this. And what I'll get is I've got a new layer. So this uh, output zones. And inside this layer, I have information. And you can see I have this hist1, hist2, hist3, which is how many cells that are in this building of each of my categories. I'll then, then also do my zone statistics on my raster layer. Is going to be my building heights 
which is a uh, building height and I'm going to use my zone which is my output zones this one I just created and it's going to make some new one that has an underscore and then minimum maximum so on and the statistics I want to calculate is down here so here I can see I want don't want the sum that doesn't make sense I want to have the count that's how many cells are there I want I don't need the mean. I might, I probably want the median and I want the minimum and the maximum. Uh, the median is always a good way of getting rid of the last noise in and so on. So we can use these. Um, and okay. And run my model. So now these buildings have lots of information that I can use to do my classification on. So they, I know how many there are of each type. I know how many there are in total. So I can do a percentage. And I know the minimum and maximum. So in order to do my classification of, of building or roof types, I would uh, create a new attribute. So take this layer and properties and fields. Bring into edit mode, create a new attribute called roof class. And um, that's going to be a text string. Let's make it change it on. And I'll just start by setting it to ah. tool. Difficult to spell correctly. So unclassified. Okay. So now I have one attribute unclassified with the value unclassified of all of them. Then I can start giving it values for different types of um, of buildings. So and this is this there's a bit of an art to this because the order that you do things in will matter and depends on what you want to do. So you'll probably have to um, tinker a bit with this. But the basic principle is that you select some buildings. So let's say I want all of them that have um, um, a steep side. So these are what we call mansard. So more that's more than Let's say uh, eight percent edge, that uh, steep and side type, not the edge type. So to do that, I'll go and say, so I'm using this up here, select by expression, and I will say that my fields so go down to field and values, and say if my so those. 75, 50 to 75%, they are in this category here, type here, divided by the total count, which is the count of basically, so that will count is the sum of one, two, and three. Remember, you have excluded four. So um, if that is larger than 0 0.08, that's more than eight. Percent. Is that what I wanted to do? Um, not really. If they say how much should it be before? Nah. It says more than one percent um, of the steeps. I'll call it a, a steep group. Okay. I can do select. See, okay, most of them had that, so that probably was not. As that's the noise. So let's say what five percent does. Uh, no problem noise. Maybe I should stick with eight percent. Uh, yeah, let's stick with eight percent. So if there's more than eight percent, there's I'll call them steep. Okay. So they are now selected. I will normally use when going to edit things. I'll use a calculator in. Um, in the attribute table, this. Um, 
So you just can see that there's the tool down here, and but that will create a new layer and it'll get a bit strained. So open the attribute table. And you shouldn't really do that if there's lot, but this is okay. And we can see there all the selected ones, they're all unclassified at the moment. I will use a classifier and say these are steep. Are they steep? And uh, I want to update my roof class. So now all of these have been given the value steep. Um, I could also say if uh, my class 2, so if my class 2, that's those from 10 to 50%, if they are more than 40% of the roof, see what that gives, something like that. Um, we could call them, uh, call them hip flaps. So update my raster field for these hip. So now they all be classified as hip. See, there's lots of no data nonce here because um, they are outside our DSM, so they have no data in them. That's fine. Um, I might just want to say that um, if there's more than, let's say, 50% that's flat, then I'll call it a flat roof. So I could do that also. I'll go back to my selection and flat, that's type one. And if that is more than, let's say, 50%, that, that does that though. Let it go of this. That looks fine. Um, I will now call these flat. Update and roof class. Good. So, probably still have someone classified somewhere. This is approximately a good start. And the video is getting really long. So um, let's start with this. And I'll save my changes. Put my pet on that and say save. Um, and I want to uh, let's finish off with visualization so we can see some of these changes we made. So, and remember that if I'm going to take this into my 3D visualization plugin. I need to get rid of those of no data. I'll just have to filter this data set first. So filter in this data set. Basically take any of these down here. Uh, count has to be larger than zero. Good. So hopefully so these are my difficult to see them now. So these are my buildings. Um, might as well classify my buildings now. So properties and symbology and classified on my so categories and use my roof types classify run. So I've got my different uh, rooftops. Uh, maybe we want our flat to be green. Because we can put green roofs on them. Um, okay, so we have our different um, types here, and we can now go. Let's also put our auto photo. We want to make some visualization here. So we have our building types, we have our specifications. And we have our auto photo, and we have calculated these different values into our buildings. So we should be good to go. So if I go my web and this plugin, and say I want to use my DTM as my base, 
that to hopefully display my data. Um, relatively flat area. Then I want to exclude my polygons, so these. And what I want to do with those is that I want to exclude them. And they're going to be relative to my DTM, that one on the DTM. And I want to exclude them by, and it's typically, I could use max um, or median, depending on what I want. Um, they should be, that's up to you what looks best. I use, I use a median, so it's not quite the top of the roof, so a bit. There's a lot of uh, noise, especially around these uh, green roofs that I want to avoid. So, do this. And uh, we can see our elements. So, we have our little church that we created. You can see that little corner I created before. Uh, I cut into the corner uh, here. So this little corner, my two levels of my tower. Um, we can see this building over here. This was the one we also where we moved the ring. So it has a garage down here, and then it has a terrace up here. And also we worked with this building over here. So here we had, the, they made this tower, and we added these uh, these extra elements in. So these were these extra buildings we added to this. Yeah, so we can see how our edits have changed our um, visualizations model here. So basically. Um, we um, have finished. We have got through our almost one hour of video. Uh, and um, basically demonstrating the process of enriching our polygon data, both elevation data and roof shape information. So you can use for classification, visualization in QGIS with a bit more detail than we did in our original uh, visualization. And we can also use this information to work further in SketchUp or ArcGIS. Uh, sorry, um, yeah, we could also do an ArcGIS, but uh, we will probably be looking at how to do this in City Engine. So, um, hope that you stayed on to the end and um, that you got through all of these different elements of creating a um, enriched. 3D model, and um, hope you liked it, and uh, hope to see you in another video. So, bye.